Hello everybody! Yes, hello everybody! Good evening and welcome to your very own Baiju 6th, 7th and 8th grade channel. I'm your teacher Aishwarya and in our class today we are going to revise the chapter Nutrition in Plants. So now of course we've done the in-depth chapter explanation. Both Ankita Ma'am and I have done it in great detail. And now is the time to revise the whole chapter to make sure that the understanding of this chapter is well and good. And of course I see that a lot of you are here. Thank you so much for being here. I know I started a tad bit late but trust me today we have something very exciting which is going to be there. So very quickly everybody students, I hope that my audio, my video and my screen and what I'm writing on the screen is visible to all of you. If it is students, give me a quick thumbs up in the live chat to let me know that we are good to go. And for students watching this video much much later after the live stream, I welcome you to this wonderful channel where we prioritize your learning and your learning outcomes over everything. Yes? All right, so I can see that a lot of you are saying, me, mom, we're good to go. We don't have any technical glitches. That is amazing. Now, of course, I am sure that a lot of students here would have seen the title saying revision with menti quiz. Now, how many of you here are excited for today's menti quiz? Yes. Now, for those of you who don't know what is a menti quiz, I will definitely be telling you. But in our class today, let me tell you what you can expect, right? Now, of course, in our class, we are going to quickly cover the three following things, right? So first and foremost, we are going to do a full chapter summary. So we are going to be doing a full chapter summary. Then I will be taking 10 questions as revision with all of you. But we will not do this on Menti. But we will do this as YouTube polls, right? We have to make class a little exciting. And then to top it all off, we are going to end our class with the final Menti quiz. So how many of you are excited for today's class? Yes? So you should not pester me right from the beginning saying that, you know, ma'am, you should, you told me Menti, you've not started with Menti. But for those of students who've attended my class yesterday, let me tell you that this is how we will do, right? We're going to start our class a little bit with our summary and our understanding and then we will end with Menti quiz, okay? And we'll keep it for half an hour, not more than that, right? Okay, very good. So students, of course, who are very new to the class, who are attending this class for the first time and answering Divjot's question, this is our timetable for today or I would say our timetable for the week which we will follow religiously across the month and as you all know 7 p.m. is for class 7 between Monday to Wednesday. Now of course today alone there has been a slight shift where your science class has become at 8 o'clock and the 8th grade SST class happened a little earlier but students I'm very sorry let me tell you the only reason this happened was because of something amazing planned for you in today's class right. So of course today let me tell you you are in for something amazing right. So which is why whoever have not taken a screenshot take it up right away because as you know Baiju's 9th, 6, 7th and 8th has always got you covered and we give you the best quality content at all times and we will be prepping you for Olympiads as well so there's going to be a lot coming your way. Now I have a question for everybody right. How many of you, right, how many of you actually noticed today's, you know, the picture, the thumbnail of this video, right? How many of you noticed the thumbnail of this video and can you tell me what you observed? Yes? So I'm constantly telling you that there is something exciting. But how many of you observed that it looks very different, right? Yes. And can all of you tell me what is going to be exciting and different today? And I want you to observe and tell me. Yes? Everybody says, ma'am, it's the Baiju's way. Today we are going to be learning the Baiju's way. And many students are telling me, ma'am, it's the Baiju's app. Exactly. So today, as a courtesy of Baiju's, the app, and of course, a lot of you here would have, of course, explored the app. But of course, if any of you have not explored the app, well, not to worry. You're going to explore this app with me, right? And today what we're also going to be doing is to summarize and do a lot of quizzes on the app as well. How many of you are excited? What is the Josh level today? We're going to be exploring something very different, right? So if you have a lot of Josh today, I need you to send me a lot of emojis, right? So can we quickly please switch to our app screen? Yes, we will have Menti. Don't worry, don't worry at all. So in the meanwhile, I'm going to quickly show you how it's going to be like. Okay, 
So now, of course, I'm going to quickly, you know, switch into my screen. But before I do that, I can see that there's a lot of excitement on the screen. And I can see students are really excited to be learning with us, learning with Baiju's The Learning App. So I'm sure that you will get to, to have an insight of what is there on the app. You've always heard about Baiju's. And whenever you hear about Baiju's, you hear about the app, right? It's never, there's not a moment that goes without the fact that you never hear about the app. You will always hear about it. And when you hear about Baiju's, you know that what's that come along with it are concept clarity and best visualization which is why we are going to be doing that today but today it's more along the lines of summary right yes creative minds is telling me mom we learn through animations exactly so can we please have the screen okay so students very quickly i need all of you to tell me if the screen is visible for all of you are you all able to see the screen are you all able to see me move the screen yes if you're able to see, give me a quick thumbs up. How many of you? Imagine I have the app right here with me. Okay, all right. Yes, it is visible. So we're going to go to the biology part. So now, of course, if you see on the side, all the subjects are available. And if you want to download the app, we'll send you a link on the live chat. It will take you to the page where you will be able to see, right? So now, of course, for students here, right? You can see that there's maths, chemistry, biology, history, geography, civics, everything which is available. And of course, we are going to focus a little bit on biology. Now, of course, on the side, I'm just going to take one minute, not too long. You can see all the chapters are there, right from nutrition in plants all the way till reproduction in organisms. You can see that there are two tablets on top, which is learn, right? Then one thing I'd like you to look at is revise. Yes. Now in revise, I will teach you. Somebody says, mom, you will not teach me. I will teach you, of course. See, there are two things I want you to focus. And that is chapter summary and important questions. And a very interesting thing is at the moment, if you download the app, right, this is absolutely free. You can use it. If you download the app right now, this chapter summary, important questions, practice questions, subjective questions, objective questions, NCRT exercise questions, they're all, you can use and you can, you know, utilize these resources. So this is of course for all of you, right? You can download it. We'll send you a link as well. It'll be there in the description or it'll be pinned for all of you, right? So I'm going to take your time very quickly. Five minutes, yes? No, no. Revision and all is free. Download the app, right? Like I said, at the moment. At the moment, you can use it for free. Okay. So now, of course, let's quickly switch into our next screen where I have clicked on chapter summary. And as you can see, the whole chapter summary is available to me. So can we have a zoomed in version, please? Okay, so as Shiva sir sets it up for all of you, you will be able to see. So let's quickly learn about and revise our chapter, Nutrition in Plants, right? Now we started learning about nutrition in plants by first understanding what are nutrients. What are nutrients? We know that they are important components in our food, which at the end of the day is necessary for growth, repair and so on. And we have various kinds of nutrients like carbohydrates, proteins and fats, vitamins and minerals. Now, of course, we know that the way in which we take in food and we utilize it is what we call as nutrition and how many modes of nutrition do we have very quickly in the live chat how many modes of nutrition do we have if nutrition is the mode of intake of food and its utilization then how many modes of nutrition do we have very good we have two broad modes of nutrition which is autotrophic mode of nutrition and heterotrophic mode of nutrition so in autotrophic mode of nutrition what do you see it is a mode of nutrition where they make their own food right while in heterotrophic mode of nutrition we know that they are dependent on other organisms for food now, when we come to autotrophic mode of nutrition, we learned about photosynthesis, very important topic in your examination. Now, we know that photosynthesis right here is a process by which organisms, especially green plants, prepare their own food with the help of carbon dioxide and water, which combines in the presence of sunlight to give us to give it glucose and gives out oxygen as a byproduct. What are the raw materials? Our raw materials are carbon dioxide and water. What are the important conditions? We know that it is chlorophyll and it is sunlight. Now we know that carbon dioxide enters through the stomata, right? And we know that water that is there is absorbed by the roots and it's transported to the upper parts. And then we know that inside the leaf is where carbon dioxide and water will combine in the presence of sunlight and we have chlorophyll, which is very, very important. And at the end of the day, we know that we, it'll combine to give us glucose, right? So this right here is the basic, simple definition. 
can we refer to the textbook absolutely you can refer students asking me to finish this fast questions are going to come from what i'm going to teach you so you have to give me five more minutes of your time so that you listen to me yes will you all listen five minutes utter focus and then we will have questions and questions only right so we're doing a summary i and as you can see i am not teaching you in depth Everything is there on screen. You will be able to access it on the app also. So like I said, no, at this moment, you can even pause this video. So for students watching this video much later, you can pause this video. You can write notes. You can make notes as the moment as well, right? So you can always pause this video, write notes, make your notes with the help of all of this. Yes. And for those of you who are not able to see the screen clearly, I request you to go to settings, increase the, you know, resolution and you will be able to watch it, right? Now we know why photosynthesis is important, right? We know that photosynthesis is necessary because at the end of the day, plants, we human beings, right? Or I would say all animals are directly or indirectly dependent on these plants for food. And we know that at the end of it, we are getting um, oxygen and we know that that is also necessary. Then we also spoke about photosynthesis in algae. There are green algae which have the ability to do photosynthesis. We know that in the case of cactus also, we see that there is the ability to do photosynthesis. Yes, but it's slightly different. And of course, most important, iodine test. How do we know that a green plant is doing this, right? How many of you know that the green plant is doing photosynthesis? We are getting glucose and this glucose is stored in the plant body through starch. Yes, it is because of this iodine test where we test for starch, right? Okay. All right. So now, of course, I can see that a lot of you are able to see. Now, very important question, right, is that in your textbooks, if you have it, please make sure you put a star mark, right? Make a star mark as well so that this will definitely help you out. This will come in your exam also. Yes. So this is, of course, how we perform iodine tests. I'm not going to go into the details, but if starch is present, we know that iodine that is there, which is initially a brown in color solution, it will become blue black. Right? So that is what we mean by this. I know I say at the end of the day a lot. And we know that also there are, car apart from carbohydrates, we know that plants use nitrogen, various other components to secrete various substances. Now moving on to something that I would like to focus on when we talk about nitrogen, right? We know that nitrogen is essential because nitrogen is necessary for producing various proteins. Now nitrogen can be supplied in the form of fertilizers or we know that it can be supplied nat naturally through nitrogen fixation. We see that there is rhizobium, which is a bacteria, which is a microorganism that actually converts gaseous nitrogen into a form which plants can utilize, right? And we know that this of course is necessary Necessary for plants to survive but at the same time yes we know that there is heterotrophic mode of nutrition also so in heterotrophic mode of nutrition we know that organisms cannot make their own food but they are dependent on other organisms for food so students I need you to tell me how many types of heterotrophic mode of nutrition is there how many times Lakme Singh at this point you don't need it can be little high end but you can refer okay but I would say first NCRT then everything else do insectivorous plants perform photosynthesis? Yes, they do. They are partially autotrophic, right? Very good. Somebody is telling four, somebody is telling me three. But broadly, if you think about it, we have three. We have parasitic nutrition, we have saprophytic mode of nutrition, right? And then we, I mean, yeah, four you can say. Insectivorous, but because they are partial, right? So that is one way. Then we have a different kind of it, which is symbiotic association, yes? All right, so now parasitic mode of nutrition pave, you know, the most common example we give is that of cascuta, which is also known as Amar Bale. And we know that these organisms cannot prepare their own food and they're dependent entirely on another organism for food. So here the parasite, this organism which takes the food is the parasite. And then we know that the organism that is there is what we call as the host. Yes. And then parasites are not only in plants, but we have animals like, you know, mosquitoes, you have leeches, bed bugs, they are all said to be parasites, okay? Then we have insectivorous plants. Now insectivorous plants, everybody listen, they are not fully or heterotrophic, they are only partially heterotrophic. Because for their nitrogen, they will eat on these insects. But they have the ability to do photosynthesis also. So your example here is that of pitcher plant which has a lid. And when an insect comes, it will trap the lid, right? Or it is going to trap it. Trap the insect. Uh, none of your business. I always feel like you guys should get proper names, okay? Because when I say none of your business, I feel very bad. 
but i'm not ignoring any of you bachchas i am revising and i'm trying to be very quick with my revision and brief with my revision because then we are only going to be solving questions okay which is why i need some focus from all of you and are not common saying ma'am spamming ma'am ignoring nahi wo sab nahi batana hai all right you have to pay attention now saprophytic mode of nutrition is a kind of nutrition wherein we see that these organisms like fungi right we see that these organisms they grow on dead and decaying matter so we see that you know bread bread that is there when stale old bread is there if you leave it for long period of time we see that it is found growing on all of these you know if you find organisms growing right which is why we see that we call them as saprotrophs now another example is of that also you can say mushrooms yeast they are all examples now then you have symbiosis which is there so they are like best friends who help each other out so a symbiotic association is when they help each other out right so we have it between in we see it in lichens which is a symbiotic association between a fungi and an algae so fungi cannot produce its own food algae can produce its own food so i'll give it produce food and give it to fungi and what will fungi do fungi they go you're giving me food okay i'll protect myself as well right so this is what the quick revision is going to be now everybody i told you this is the first part where in 5 10 minutes right i quickly went and i taught you the whole concepts so have we had a refresher of all the topics right did we have a, a refresher of all the topics that we learned in the chapters yes or no yes Are we ready to solve some questions on YouTube polls? Now, ten questions on YouTube polls. They're not many. My promise to you is that, right? Very good. A lot of you are saying yes. If you want to go ahead and check out, right? If you want to go and you want to have a look at the app and you want to use it yourself, you can download it. It is the description is there in the. It's the link is there in the description. You can check it out. Okay, now my students telling me, ma'am, I am not. You are ignoring me and all that. Please don't say that. Okay, I am just. trying to make this as easy i want to be as quick as well at the same time right ma'am can you explain the importance of nitrogen see nitrogen is very important for plants because you know that proteins are necessary proteins are the building blocks of life right so plants also need proteins and now for them to make proteins they need nitrogen which is why we see that they take up nitrogen either from the soil or we add them to the soil in the form of fertilizers right yes i will saiful i will do this for 8th grade as well So now of course for now at the moment if you are able to download it you will be able to access all of these features right you will be able to do it okay how many types are there broadly three right because insectivorous plants are partially heterotrophic so i would say three yes algae don't have roots no they don't have roots right all right so now of course i'm going to move on to the next feature or i will not say feature but the next aspect of it which i really like and that is these practice questions okay now in these practice questions one very interesting thing that i see you know when you say start practice it will give you a pop up right and it will actually make questions which are adapting or which will help you adapt and understand better so now this of course is going to be a youtube poll see there are five five questions totally 10 questions we will do uske baad we will switch to menti right 10 questions on youtube poll 10 10 questions on menti pura ka 20 questions we have done so i hope all of you are ready so can we have the youtube poll please which is a b c d okay thank you so this is the first question on your screen so the question here is the mode of nutrition in which organisms make food by themselves is known as dash nutrition so now is it parasitic nutrition autotrophic mode of nutrition is it heterotrophic saprotrophic mode of nutrition or heterotrophic so the youtube poll is live for all of you everybody if you want the link the link is also available you can click on it and download it very quickly yes very good i can see that the polls are coming almost 94 polls but i know a lot of you can do much much better kunal bachcha what is your doubt you can ask me rhizobium is a type of bacteria Yes, saprotrophic mode. Kunal, saprotrophic mode of nutrition is where these fungi and everything they grow on dead and decaying matter. Now I can see ninety-seven of you have voted for autotrophic mode. Let's submit and see. And we know that in this case, well done. So as you all know, right? There are certain organisms which can make their own food, which we call as autotrophs. Let's move on to the next question. So we can end this poll, please. The next question is. photosynthesis generates which of the following nutrients 
Now your options are carbon dioxide, glucose, nitrogen or oxygen. Read the question carefully. Photosynthesis generates which of the following nutrients? Carbon dioxide, glucose, nitrogen or oxygen. Think about it. What does it? We are saying nutrient. Don't misunderstand. Now I can see that the YouTube poll is live for all of you. Now I can see that there is good. I can see that majority of you in the live session are able to understand this well. Okay. Very good. Very good. I can see 188 votes. Very good all of you. Most of you have got the answer. But some of you are still a little confused. But not a problem. Right? Okay. So can we please close the polls please? Okay. So now of course most of you have got the answer. You have given me glucose. Let's submit. Well done. Glucose is the answer. See they are saying nutrient. Now what are your nutrients? Your carbohydrates, your proteins, your fats, your vitamins, your minerals. What is glucose? Glucose is a carbohydrate. Yes. Oxygen is a gas. We will not categorize it as a nutrient. For those of you who got confused. Right. Now at the same time some of you who said carbon dioxide and nitrogen. No, no. They are also gases. Right. So it's not a nutrient. Okay. CB. Yes. At the moment you can use it. Right. Let's go on to the next question. Which among the following is a micronutrient? Okay, interesting question. Which among the following is a micronutrient? Now see, there are nutrients in the soil which are macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients are present more in amount. Micronutrients are present less in amount. So which among the following is a macronutrient and micronutrient? You need to identify. Yes, everybody, quickly. Just give me one moment. Okay, I can see that the poll is working well. I can see a lot of students have just joined in. For students who have just joined in, right? For all of you, let me tell you that we are solving questions on Baiju's The Learning App. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button on this video also. Our options are zinc, calcium, magnesium and potassium. I think the screen has minimized. Can we zoom in a little bit? We'll zoom it in, don't worry. Poll is running live, but now I can see a lot of mixed options are coming. Many of you have told me, ma'am, B. So shall I mark B? Shall I mark B as the answer? You have all told me, ma'am, I am going to mark your answer. Okay, I am not marking my answer. But I am going to mark your answer where most of you are telling me, ma'am, calcium is a micronutrient. Let's see. Oh, oh. silly mistake. Now they are saying if you want, we can take a hint. How many of you want a hint for this? Calcium is not the answer. Okay, many of you, 50% of you have voted for B. Now, how many of you want a hint? Tell me yes in the live chat right now. Okay, many of you are telling me, ma'am, I think we need a hint. Okay. Hint is micronutrients are the hint I only gave, but okay. Micronutrients are required in small quantities and they are obtained uh, from the soil by addition of manure and fertilizer. Now, the thing is, potassium, magnesium, calcium, these are all important. Now, what if I mark zinc? What about zinc? Yes. So this for you might be slightly tricky, but this is why I gave you the answer. Zinc is a micronutrient, right? We see that zinc is needed only in small amounts. Too much of zinc is also not good, right? But zinc is also essential for proper functioning. Yes. So this is something new that you learned today. It's not hard. It's very easy only. Now it's a true or false question. Can we just put T and F in the uh, poll? Okay. So this is a true or false question for all of you. Insectivorous plants usually grow in soil with poor nutrients. Hence, they do not perform photosynthesis and they completely depend on insects for their nutrition. Very, very beautiful question. Insectivorous plants usually grow in the soil with poor nutrients. Hence, they do not perform photosynthesis and they completely depend. I just gave you the answer some time back. I gave you this answer. So you will call me Leekosaurus, but see, I have given you the answer. Now I can see the poll is running 50-50% for true and 50-50% for false. I am going to wait two more minutes. Everybody is leaning towards. I like how Manoj says, ma'am, this is a laddu question. Hai. Okay. Maths exam, you will have to put the aag. Of course. 
Ma'am, why can't plants take in nitrogen directly? Plants cannot take in nitrogen directly because nitrogen gas is not something they can utilize, right? Nitrogen is a very stable gas and they can't utilize it directly, which is why they need to convert that, okay? Everybody's like, ma'am, you're a very big leucosaurus. Oh, oh. okay, 53% have said false. Very good. 47 of you got confused. And for my 47%, I will explain this part once again, right? Insectivorous plants usually grow in soil with poor nutrients. That is true. They grow in soil which is nitrogen deficient. But they do not perform photosynthesis. No. They have the ability to perform photosynthesis. Which is why we see that they are partially autotrophic and partially heterotrophic. Why do they depend on insects? For their nitrogen content, right? So that is the reason. Why do plants? Kunal, I have given your answer, bacha. I have given it. Now, last question. Okay? Last question. Which of the following contains chlorophyll? Algae, okay, which of the following contains chlorophyll? Ha, okay, theek hai. Algae, cascuta, mushrooms or mango trees? Now, here the thing is, choose one or more option. One or more option. So, there are two answers which are correct. Okay, now I know why you call me Lycosaurus. <laughs> one or more so the poll is like partially correct only i would say they are very clearly said one or more i will stress on this because i feel like you may not be able to see but whatever you have marked you can tell me right majority of you have voted for algae Why? okay i'll not say anything now cascuta and mango trees okay a and d a and d a and d okay everybody has told me algae Mango tree, shall we hit submit? Submit karenge? Ah, very good, very good, exactly, right? So we know that algae and mango trees are green in color because they contain chlorophyll. And we know that cascuta and mushrooms that are there don't have chlorophyll in them and they are heterotrophs. Very good. So, everybody, we have done our warm up. We have warmed up our information. Now, very quick question for all my students here. How about we do a rapid fire with the next set of questions and then we move to menti quiz? Yes or no? Shall we do five more questions with YouTube polls? Yes? Five more questions with YouTube polls? Yes or no? Give me a quick yes. I know you are all very excited about menti. We will do menti. Don't worry. But five more with YouTube polls, right? Because these questions are quite different. They're not like your straightforward, easy peasy questions. They make you think and they make you revise your concepts also, right? Okay, ma'am, I'm getting stressed looking at these questions. Are no need, right? No need at all. Now, if you are enjoying this class, I need you to make sure you hit the subscribe button on this video because you see the way we prepare you is unlike any other channel, right? Which is why you need to make sure to hit the subscribe button and you need to make sure to hit the like button as well. So I can see good number of you here in the live class, but I see very, very few students who have hit the like button. Only 136 likes. What is this, students? Jaldi, jaldi say like button, hit karo, and let's get started, right? Aapne bola like button. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. So we will not, we will do polls. Ye wala jaldi, jaldi karenge, and then we will switch to menti, right? We will end it with a bang. Okay. Very good, all of you. Very good. Okay. Ma'am, why do some change, some leaves change to yellow? Because they undergo something called as chlorosis or they undergo a phenomena where they lose some of the chlorophyll or they undergo aging and they change color also. Okay, quickly moving to the next one where we move on to stripes, all right? So we'll have the poles and we'll be a little more faster. So the next question here, last five questions, yes? Which of the following organisms do not perform photosynthesis? Fern, algae, cyanobacteria or bread mold? Which of these organisms do not do or do not perform photosynthesis? Easy peasy lemon squeezy question, right? All right, students, quickly go ahead and have a look. I can see that a lot of you here have got the answer. I can see 107 votes, poll is live. Now I can see that majority of you are aiming towards option D. Let's close the polls. I'm going to be a little faster in this round. And very good. We see that in this case, bread mold is the correct answer because we know that bread mold is a saprotroph, which means it grows on dead and decaying matter. Legumes are basically, or leguminous plants are examples of a type of plants wherein in the roots, right, there's an organism called as rhizobium. 
Moving on to the next question. Aha. Okay. This question is, which of this is a macronutrient needed by plants? Or which among these nutrients are needed in large amounts? Nitrogen, zinc, copper or chlorine? Ye bahut easy hai. If, don't overthink this question. That's all I would say. Poll is live. I can see almost 100 votes in. Very good all of you. Most of you here have got the answer. 70% have voted for nitrogen and correct answer. Because we know that nitrogen that is there is an important nutrient. And many of you asking me ma'am why is nitrogen necessary? Because we know that nitrogen is necessary for protein synthesis and for synthesizing various compounds within the plant. Right? Very good. Next question. All plants have chlorophyll. True or false? All plants have chlorophyll. True or false? Jaldi, jaldi say. Tell me. T and F, it will come. Ma'am, bahut hard hai. Nahi hai hard. Bahut simple hai. Or agar, if you have some doubts on your concepts, I request all of you to please make sure, go back and watch the videos on the channel. Please make sure that your concepts are clear. Right? Okay, I can see that most of you, I, I can see 37 votes. Poll is live, bachas. All of you can vote on the poll right youtube polls for those of you who are not able to see there is a part in the comments where you will be able to find right at the moment you will be able to download it okay 208 votes 84 of you have said false very good because we know that there are some plants like cascuta which do not have that ability moving on to the second last question okay this is a slightly interesting one what adaptation has the cactus developed to protect itself from predators, right? And reduce transpiration. Is it spines? Is it flowers? Is it fruits? Or is it long roots? Think about it. You don't need to overthink it also. What helps it? What helps us protect? Adaptation that has or what is there in cactus that helps it protect. I can see 91% of you have voted the answer. I can see close to 150 votes. But 200 of you are here. Very good, 90% of you have said spines and that is the correct answer, right? Well done. Now we move on to the last question before which we go into menti. A plant which obtains nutrition from the host and deprives it of valuable nutrients are called as dash. Is it an autotroph? Is it a heterotroph? Is it a saprophyte or is it a parasite? What is the correct answer here? Autotroph, heterotroph, saprophyte? Saprophyte or saprotroph or parasite. Yes? Which here is the correct answer? Easy peasy. We're talking about depriving nutrition from the host and taking away the valuable nutrients. Just like how a thief would come and steal everything and go. Yes, close to 200 votes. 78 of you have got the answer. All of you have told me parasite. And well done. Because we know that parasite takes its nutrition from the host. So with this everybody, I'm going to end this particular quiz before we switch on to the last set of 10 questions on Menti. But see, if you enjoy playing such quizzes, if this is something that you like doing, right? Wherein you want to play it yourself, you want to go fast, you want to go slow, you can download the app, link is there, it's pinned in the comments in the live chat. You can just click on it and you can download, right? And at the end of the day, like I told you, at the moment, this revision part and practice questions, everything is free for all of you. So you can check it out, yes? So now, of course, it's time for Menti. So can we please switch our screens? Everybody, most awaited, please go to www.menti.com and type in the code, right? The code is available in the meanwhile as I set it up. Yes, code is 6230899. Yes, 6230899. So those of you who don't know what is Menti, this is the final leg of today's quiz like I told you, right? I know I said half an hour and I've taken almost 50 minutes, but not to worry. Go to www.menti.com, open a different browser and type in this particular code. Yes? Ha, ah, most awaited. But before I start Menti, I will tell you one thing. Huh? We should have at least 200 likes on this video. And yes, yes, we will be doing SST very soon. So don't worry about social sciences also. Shan Bhati, I will definitely help you. Gauranga Sundarde, I will help you with that also. Don't worry. Shubhi, at the moment, you will be able to access it for free. Join, join. Okay. All right. I can see a lot of you here have joined. Let me see. 
Saurabh sir abhi to nahi hai. Every session you will ask for him. Saurabh sir has, Saurabh sir is not there. I will tell Saurabh sir though. Okay. Yes, go so go to www.menti.com, type in the code 6230899. How to join? Open a next tab and uske baad you join, right? Okay, thank you Varnika, thank you so much. Hello Alex, welcome. Now many, many of you who are telling me, ma'am, aap Hindi mein baat karo, ma Hindi is very bad, right? At the moment we know that you can access it for free. Yes, at the moment. Okay. Good, many of you have joined. Let me see how many of you are here. So 10 questions we did on YouTube polls, 10 questions here, 20 questions where you have become pros at nutrition and plants, right? 20 questions ka, menti, quiz, poll, revision, everything has started. I can see 170 players are there. So, uh, next 10 minutes we will finish 10 questions. Are we ready? Are we ready for this challenge? 10 questions in 10 minutes. How many of you are excited for this challenge? Now it's getting full excited, no? Yes, okay. Now if you enjoy this, see, all I ask in turn is to hit that like button. And all I ask you to hit is the subscribe button. Nothing else I want, right? So jaldi jaldi go ahead and let's hit the subscribe button. Okay, so let's get started. I don't know, I make all these challenges, but I don't know if we'll do it in 10 minutes. Question number one. Fungi is an example of what? Fungi is an example of autotroph, parasite, insectivorous organism or saprotroph. Easy, peasy, super easy question. You'll all be able to get the answer for this. Go to Menti and vote. You have 30 seconds. 183 of you are here and I know most of you know the answer to this. All right. I feel like so many of you know the answer that the timer is going very slowly. Very good, all of you. Very good. Students, fungi is an example of a saprotroph that exhibits saprotrophic mode of nutrition wherein they grow on dead and decaying matter which is why we call it as a saprotroph. Very good. Some misclicks, it's okay. Right? You know the answer. That is what I'm more focused on. Question number two, very quickly on your screen now. Yes? The next question is, which among the following is a parasite? Okay, easy question again. Lichens, algae, cascuta, fungus. It's okay, it's okay. Don't worry about misclicks. If you know the concept, that is what I am more focused on. But don't be in a hurry, answer Aram se. Right, just give me one moment. Okay, very good all of you, very good. So most of you here know the answer. It is cascuta, which is a parasite. Fungi is not a parasite. It it's a saprotroph. Algae is again an autotroph. Green algae specifically. And we know lichens exhibit symbiotic association. Easy peasy. Now moving on to the next question, which is question number three, everybody, on your screens now. Okay? So the next question is, which, uh, which of the following is the ultimate source of energy for all living organisms? Plants, animals, water or sun. Which is the ultimate source for all living organisms. Simple question. Most of you know the answer to this. All of you have voted. Very proud. Very proud of you who have given me sun as the answer. Now students who answered plants, I will not say y'all are wrong, okay? Because you know that plants at the end of the day are producers and you know your heterotrophs are dependent on your plants. But for plants to produce their own food, from where do they get their energy from? They are getting it from the sun, right? Which is why in this case we see that sun is the ultimate source of energy. Scoreboard will come after the fifth question, okay? So now of course you have question number four on your screens now. So now of course let's have a look everybody. Some organisms live together and share shelter and nutrients. This is called as what? Predation, symbiosis, autotrophs or heterotrophs. I will not say anything because then you will say, Ma'am, you are leakosaurus, ho. half the time you are leaking everything. Drishti Jain, the code is 6230-0899. Yes. And hey, if you like playing such quizzes, all of you can, again, if you download the app, right, you have everyday quizzes also, which happens at 7 o'clock. You can play those quizzes as well. It's very interesting. Very good, all of you. Very good. I can see most of you have got the answer. We know that when they live together, they help each other out. They're like friends, which is why in this case, we see that it is symbiosis. So well done, all of you. Well done. 
Easy peasy question, no? And we know that example of symbiosis is nothing but uh, like in Menti is not working. Oh, so if Menti is not working, Menti is crashing, close Menti and open it once again, you will be able to do it, right? Gauri, ah, definitely. If that's something you would like, let me know in the comments of this video, right? It's very important that it's there in the comments. Moving on to question number five. Yes, so let's have a look. The plant that traps and feeds on insects among the following is what? Cascuta, China rose, rose or pitcher plant. Hi, Kanishka. Hello. Cascuta, China rose, rose or pitcher plant. We're talking about trapping and feeding on insects. Easy peasy question, all of you. I know you know the answer. No problem at all, Drishti. No problem. See, I'm holding myself back from saying anything. Very good. I'm so proud of all of you. 219 votes. Amazing. Brilliant. My students are brilliant. Right? All of you know the answer. It's an insect. It's an example of an insectivorous plant which is dependent on these insects for nutrition. So let's have a look at the leaderboard. Let's see what the leaderboard says. All right. Okay. So now, of course, I can see that Geetanjali is on top and is the fastest with 4,921 points. Then I have Bell, Simba, Akarsh Champion, Atharv Patak, Pranita, Aishwarya Number Ninja, Pragya Class 7, Dhanya, Ambir, and Anshuman, Bio Lover. Well done, all of you. Well done. Now, many of you here are telling me, ma'am, I got only 139. Ma'am, my vote is only 51, 65, 99. It's okay. Absolutely fine. With the next set of questions, you guys are going to ace, right? You will be in the top. I'm telling you, don't worry about it. If your rank was 99 and it became 57, that is what you have to focus on. With every quiz, with every question, you only need to focus on getting better. You don't need to focus on becoming number one directly. How can you reach the top? You will reach it step by step. So everybody with that motivation, with that Josh, let's go on to the last five questions. Are we ready? Is the Josh high? I hope the Josh is super duper high because we're going to get started with the last five questions, right? So quickly, let's move on to the last five questions. Now, if you're enjoying this class, you know what to do. No, you have to hit 200 likes. That's our aim for today. Video pe minimum 200 likes to hona hi chahiye. What do I see? I see 198. Jaldi, jaldi, go ahead and hit the like button on this video. Don't forget to do that. Yes? So quickly moving on to question number six on your screens now. What does the word photo mean in photosynthesis? Does it mean water, light, oxygen or air? So easy. So, so, so easy. I can't say anything, you know, because... <laughs> they are very cute. <laughs> yes, I can see some misleading answers also. Just saying, huh? Chat pay. But very good. Photo means light. And synthesis means to combine. So photosynthesis, big. We know that carbon dioxide and water combine in the presence of light, which is sunlight and chlorophyll to give us oxygen and glucose. Very good. Quickly moving on to question number seven, everybody. Question number seven on your screens now. Okay. So now, of course, the chemical used. Huh? See, I was explaining this to you. The chemical used in starch test is what? Is it saffron and blue ink, iodine or litmus? Hani Kim. Yes. What is it? See, I told you that in starch test, this particular test helps us detect whether starch is a byproduct or glucose is produced as a byproduct of photosynthesis. And we use iodine. And we know excess glucose is stored in the form of starch. And we know that iodine is a brownish liquid, which when we test or when we put a drop, few drops of it for starch test, it will turn blue-black in color. And it will only turn blue-black if it combines with starch, which is why the correct answer is iodine. Moving on to question number eight, everybody. Question number eight on your screens now. Very good, Aditi. Very good. It's okay, Vinod. I forgot your name, but it's okay. The byproduct of photosynthesis is what? Focus. Byproduct. Carbon dioxide, water, 
sunlight or oxygen. So when photosynthesis happens, right, you get one main thing why photosynthesis happens. Then as a result of it, something else also is produced. I'm trying very hard not to leak any answer to you. Otherwise you will tell mom, you please don't leak. Hmm, very good. See, carbon dioxide, water, sunlight, they are your raw materials, right? You use them to give you glucose. But at the end of the day, if you see, oxygen is given out as a byproduct. That means main, main product why photosynthesis happens is to produce your glucose. As a byproduct or what is also formed is what we call as, I mean, is oxygen, yes? So this is the correct answer. Now moving on to question number 9 everybody. So let's have a look at question number 9 on your screens now. Okay. So question number 9 is the raw materials used for photosynthesis are. I literally told you the answer in the previous one. Carbon dioxide, what? Hydrogen, oxygen. Carbon dioxide, hydrogen, peroxide, sunlight. Oxygen, water, carbon. I literally told you the answer. I know my famous line is at the end of the day. It is my famous line. No, I understand some of you are facing issues because of internet lag, but don't worry, don't worry. Importance should be focused on learning concept. Students have not read the options correctly. What do we need to make photosynthesis? We require carbon dioxide and water. Where do I get my carbon dioxide from? I get it from my surroundings. It will enter into the leaf through my stomata. Then we know that water is absorbed all the way from the roots and it is taken to the leaf. Do I need hydrogen? Hydrogen and oxygen separately? No. I use hydrogen. In water you have hydrogen and oxygen. But that is not the same as hydrogen and oxygen. Now carbon dioxide, hydrogen, peroxide? No, no. Oxygen and water? No. And only carbon. Carbon dioxide and water. Right? So that's what we need to focus on. Misclicks happen. It's okay. Please don't feel sad. You know the answer. That is more important, right? Deva, Divya Jyot, I know today Menti is doing a lot of gimmicks. But you know we always expected that from Menti, no? Yeah, that, that's there. So, Jaldi say last question. Question number 10. It's, the match, it's a match the following. So, everybody, you have chlorophyll, nitrogen, amarbale. You have 60 seconds for this. So, take some time and match it, okay? Don't be in some hurry burry to give me answer. Chlorophyll, nitrogen, amarbale in animal, insects. On the other side, bacteria, heterotrophs, pitcher plant, leaf, parasite. Now, you have to give me the answer. Take your time, please. I hope you have a notebook and pen ready with you so that you can give me the answer. Very good, all of you. Very good. Time is almost up around. You have 20 more seconds, so don't worry. Hello, my new student, Abhigyan. Welcome. Everybody has voted before time. And 168 of you have got the correct answer. Very good. So this is the solution, okay? Your chlorophyll is present in your leaf. Your nitrogen can be fixed by bacteria like rhizobium. Your amar bale is just another name for cascuta, which is a parasite. Then you have animals, which are heterotrophs. Your insects, which is a pitcher plant, right? Because pitcher plant will feed on insects. So with this, we come to the end of today's class. Wow, today's class was very long, right? It's almost 45 minutes. I told you 30 minutes, but I almost took 45 to 50 minutes. Yes, but at the end of the day, I hope all of you, I know I say end of the day a lot, I'll try to minimize that. But I hope you enjoyed this particular class. So let's have a look at the final leaderboard and let's see what the leaderboard says. Hi, Gaudi, hello. So here I can see a lot of old names, new names, but Gitanjali is on top. Well done, Gitanjali. Right? Then I can see Rashika Singh is the fastest, followed by Anamika, Vaishnavi, Pranita, Mahesh, Pragya. Then I have Bell, Ambir, and Lakshay, who've done very well. Very good. Kiran Sanjay, why? What happened? Is there some doubt that you have? If you have a doubt, tell me. But why unnecessarily you're saying negative things? Say good things, positive things, right? 
very good all of you very good yes we will be doing science exemplar questions very quickly i mean very soon on the channel as well don't worry we will be having more such questions but most importantly like i said by june 9th 6 7th 8th pay we have the best quality content and of course we will be doing it for olympiad also so don't worry because we've got you covered yes and if you enjoyed the class that we did today because today's class was slightly hatke right we helped we took the help of the app we did a lot of poll questions we did a lot of menti questions questions so if you enjoy a class where we don't only do menti or we do only poll but you want to do like many many things together yes if if you enjoy such classes then let me know in the comments of this video if you enjoyed you know doing uh, doing more and more questions doing interactive questions let me know in the comments and if you need anything more from us for example a lot of you are asking about olympiad sessions and cracking olympiad again all i ask you to do is let me know in the comments because i will definitely be checking them i had a lot of fun in today's class students i hope i see you soon but up until then everybody take care lots of love and bye bye